Hello, today we're going to solve uh, trig functions. So a few things I'm going to bring up here. Usually I write my rules on the, this side of the screen. So just know we're going to be working with special angle triangles and a special angle. So the 30 degrees, which converts to pi over six in radians. So as we know that in, in, in measuring angles is like measuring anything else. The length, for instance, we could use inches or we could use centimeters, the same angles, we could use degrees or radians. Um, 60 degrees is pi over three, 45 degrees is pi over four. We have two special triangles right there. So the 45, 45, 90, that's one, one root two, that's the ratio of the sides. Also the 30 degrees, 60 degrees, it's one root three, two. Also, when I'm working on things like this, some of you like using the unit circle. I like using the graphs of y equals sine theta and y equals cos theta. Because of the sine and cos, they equal zero or plus, or sorry, zero, plus or minus one. Then you could resort to this and just interpolate to find what the answer is from these two graphs. And I'll be showing you on the examples. So the first one, or the first question I'm doing here is the sine, two sine squared plus sine x equals zero. So the first thing you need to do here is factor this. So factoring this is, um, there's the greatest common factor, which is sine x. And you end up getting two sine x plus one inside the brackets equals zero. And therefore, this sine x by itself, it will be zero. And this here, sine x will be negative half for this to give you zero. And you could just take it aside and, and solve it. So you go two sine x plus one equals zero and two sine x equals negative one, divide both sides by two and you end up with sine x equals negative one half. And that's how I arrived to that uh, answer. I'm just gonna get rid of this. So if you need to go through the process, go for it. Um, and now I'm gonna start solving for x. And since they said my domain is between zero and two pi, then uh, for sine x equals zero, as I mentioned earlier, sine cos, if they equal zero or one or negative one, you could always go here and you'll be able to solve for that a lot easier. So for the first one, x, equals sine x equals zero, that would be the x right here. So if you look at the sine theta here, when the angle is zero, the sine is zero. So x equals zero here. And also when the angle is pi, sine of pi is zero as well, and two pi as well, but two pi is not included in the, in, in the domain. So therefore x would equal zero and pi. That's exactly where sine x equals zero, right? At this angle, which is zero and the angle pi right there. For sine x equals negative half, you have to have a different approach. So you draw your quadrants. All students take calculus. And usually I write zero, 180 and 360. I don't write the 90 degrees and the 270 degrees. And the reason is when I'm finding angles in here, I only need the 0, 180, 360 because, um, and I'll show you why. So now we have sine x equals negative one half. So the negative indicates that I'm in this quadrant, quadrant number three and the quadrant number four. Okay, so just a few, these are the quadrants right here, three and four. And the sine is negative, so therefore it's in the third and the fourth quadrant since all of them are positive, so the sine would have been positive here and only the sine is positive here. Um, now, you have to find out what the reference angle is and the reference angle is always between the terminal arm and the x-axis. Never make it between the terminal arm and the y-axis. That, that will get you in trouble. And that's the reason why I'm not writing 90 and 270. And sorry, I'm just uh, gonna change that as a matter of fact, because I'm asked to find the angle in radians. So I'm gonna use radians here. Um, 
So this is zero pi, because pi is 180, and two pi is the 360. So now I gotta go to this triangles here and find out which angle has a sine of a half. So if we look at the 30s, sine of 30 is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's the sine of 30 is one half, and 30 in radius is pi over six. So my reference angle here would be pi over six, and here would be pi over six. Now, x1 would be, if, so you always measure the angle from zero, so you're measuring this first angle right there. So the first angle would be basically pi and add the reference angle, which is pi over six. So it'd be pi plus pi over six, which is the same as six pi over six plus pi over six. And that will give you seven pi over six. So here's an answer. And then x2 is, you're measuring the angle from zero as always. And you're going all the way through here. If you want to find out what that angle is, just go all the way to two pi and take away the reference angle pi over six. So it will be two pi minus, two pi over minus pi over six, which is the same as 12 pi over six, if you want to do common denominator, minus pi over six, which gives you 11 pi over six. And that's your second answer there, of course. And there's also your answer. So you have four answers to this. That this two came from sine x equals zero, and this two came from sine x equals negative one half. Now I'm gonna go to the second one right here. And again, I see a greatest common factor, which is cos x, and I'm gonna get uh, cos x minus one in the bracket equals zero. And therefore, cos x equals zero from here, and then cos x equals one from here. That's what makes this expression zero. If cos x was one, that would be zero, zero times whatever is gonna be zero. And if you make this zero times whatever in here, it's gonna be zero. Now, I don't have to do any of this here because as I said, the sine x, cos x, they equal zero, one or negative one. All you need to do is just go to the graph. So now, cos x equals zero, if I look at the cos and where it equals zero, it equals zero right here and right there. So the angle for this will be x equals pi over two and three pi over two. And for cos x equals one is here and there, but we can, so it's at, at angle zero, at angle two pi, but two pi is not in, domain, in the domain as I mentioned. So here x would equal just zero. And these are your three answers. So this is a lot faster if you're using these two sinusoidal waves, the sine and the cosine waves basically. And as I said, you, if you sine x, cos x, if they equal zero, one or negative one, just use the, these two sinusoidal waves and you'll be able to answer this a lot faster. I hope this helps. Stay safe and see you next time.